Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about how to improve immune function naturally by using some lesser known compounds that actually have some decent research behind them. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, my name is Zach Allison and welcome to Nutrition Library, your trusted resource for an evidence-based approach to supplementation. If you haven't already or you're new to the channel, do me a huge favor and hit that red subscribe button that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. All right, so this video is actually a follow-up video to my previous video on the most well-researched immune uh, boosting supplements that are on the market. And that video included some things like garlic and echinacea, as well as vitamin C, zinc, and vitamin D. And those are kind of your primary base to work from. However, I got so many questions about different compounds in the comments of that video, I figured I would go ahead and make a follow-up video, and so here it is. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about five lesser known compounds um, and herbal supplements that have been traditionally used to stimulate the immune system and actually have some decent research behind their effectiveness. However, they do not have any direct research on their effects on sickness, which is why I did not include them in my original list. And then at the end of this video, we're also going to be talking about four just really, really, really poor researched compounds that are super popular. So make sure you stay to the end of the video for that. Now, all five of the compounds that we're going to talk about in this video are all adaptogenic herbs, meaning that they help the body adapt to stress, which may make them of particular interest right now, especially just because of the season of life that most of us find ourselves in right now and everything that's going on helping to not only increase immune function but also decrease the effects of stress are going to be especially important. Now, like I stated in my previous video, it will be highly prudent to cease intake of any immune stimulant herbs or supplements whatsoever if you are to uh, come down with symptoms of COVID-19 simply because um, there is a predominant theory out there right now that a lot of the effects of COVID-19 specifically and the later stages of that disease state are spurred on by what's been termed as a cytokine storm, which suffice it to mean that your immune system actually begins to attack the body. And so um, theoretically speaking, stimulating the immune system in that state would not be a good thing. And so taking these immune stimulants is probably gonna be a really bad idea if this cytokine storm actually is happening in the later states of that disease. But with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the list. And first on our list today is an herb known as astragalus. Now, astragalus is actually typically taken as a anti-aging compound that a lot of folks in the anti-aging community like to take because of its positive effects on chromosome replication during cell replication in the body. And it's also taken primarily for its effects on energy levels and just vitality in general. However, in this study right here, astragalus was actually found to activate T cell count to a greater degree than even echinacea, which was actually used as a reference drug in this study. Now, again, if you have seen my previous video, you'll know that echinacea is my second favorite immune stimulant and um, technique to ward off illness. And that's just because the amount of robust research that we have on echinacea. And so astragalus is actually one of the herbs that I'm most excited about simply because of the sheer magnitude of effect that it has on stimulating T cell production in the thymus gland. And so T cells are one of your primary immune markers and immune cells that 
um, help identify virally infected cells within the body and actually cause them to explode. And so by increasing uh, T cell production in the thymus gland, astragalus theoretically has a really, really good ability to increase immune function. Now, again, as is the case with all of the herbs that are on this list today, there isn't any direct research on their effects on preventing illness. Um, I'm simply extrapolating the data that's been found in this study in particular. However, because of the sheer magnitude of the effect on T cell production in the thymus gland, um, again, this is one of the herbs that I'm most excited about right now. Right now. Now, our second herb on the list today is an herb known as L. euthero or Siberian ginseng. Now, L. euthero is typically taken because of its positive effects on cognition as well as its positive effects on physical performance. However, in this study right here, as well as some other studies, L. euthero had the ability to not only increase T cells like astragalus did, but it also had the ability to increase natural killer cells within the body, which is a, another type of immune cell that is produced in the thymus gland. And now L. euthero has a little bit more research on it when it comes to its ability to increase uh, immune markers and increase immune function. However, because it doesn't have as high of a magnitude of effect as astragalus, um, that is the reason that I put it number two on our list today. Now, another herb that I am super excited about and is number three on our list today is an herb known as holy basil. Now, holy basil is typically used for its anti-stress effects, which is why I am particularly um, excited about this herb, simply because when you compound its effects on stress and its ability to reduce stress with its ability to also increase immune function, it's one of those herbs that can kill two birds with one stone pretty much. Now in this study right here, uh, holy basil was found to increase interferon gamma as well as interleukin-4, which are both uh, cytokines in the body which are released by cells when they detect um, infected cells. And so these are kind of like signaling molecules to some degree that kind of signal to things like T cells and natural killer cells to come to that area to begin to defeat cells and kill cells that are infected with viruses. But then holy basil was also found in that same study to also increase T cell count, which is very similar to L. euthero and astragalus. Now, the reason it's number three on our list today is because it does have a lesser degree of magnitude when it comes to its effects on the immune system as well as less research than L. euthero. However, because it did have effect on several different markers when it comes to immune function, I did think it was important to put this on the list as well. Now, the fourth herb on our list today, which I am a huge fan of and I have done several videos on already, is an herb known as ashwagandha. And now ashwagandha, like holy basil, has been shown in several different clinical trials to reduce stress and anxiety um, and actually relieve depression in a couple of different studies as well. And it is also taken in order to improve physical performance as well as improve hormone balance. However, in this study, it was also found to increase T cell count as well as natural killer count. And in a couple of different other studies, it's been shown to uh, increase white blood cell count just in general. However, there is a little bit of conflicting evidence because of another study that found that uh, it did not increase white blood cell count. And so because of this, it is number four on our list today. Now, again, because it does have such a potent effect on reducing the effects of stress on the body, I think this is another compound that is especially beneficial right now for a lot of people that are going through a lot of stress. And so stress in and of itself has the ability to suppress the immune system. And so again, with ashwagandha being able to lower the effects of stress while simultaneously increasing immune function, uh, I find ashwagandha and holy basil to be especially important right now.
Now, the fifth herb on our list today is an herb known as Panax Ginseng. And now, Panax Ginseng is a fairly popular supplement um, that is typically used for physical performance as well as cognitive performance. However, it has not been shown to directly influence immunity, though some people do typically take it for immune function. However, I did find three very interesting studies that were pointing to Panax Ginseng's ability to actually augment the effectiveness of vaccines. And so while this may not be specifically relevant right now, I do see this as a compound that might be a great adjuvant to taking a vaccine and improving the functionality and the ability of that vaccine to increase antibody count to the coronavirus itself. Now, in one study in particular, Panax Ginseng was shown to improve the function of the flu vaccine by up to 40%. And this has been replicated in a handful of clinical trials and rat models, which is another reason that this herb is of such interest to me right now. All right, guys. So actually during the editing process, uh, I realized that I made a major boo-boo and left a fairly significant compound off the list, uh, which is reishi mushroom. Now, the reason I left it off of the list um, is because it's actually referred to something different in most of the scientific literature. And so I happened to look over it while I was doing research for this video. However, it has been brought to my attention that there is some fairly significantly good research on reishi mushroom. And there are a handful of studies that demonstrate its ability to increase immune function by increasing cytokine activity, um, as well as natural killer cell activity, T cell activation, as well as activating macrophages and dendritic cells. Now, another reason that I looked over it during the research for this video um, is that a lot of the research has been done specifically when it comes to um, Rishi's effects on the immune system in reference to cancer. And so though there is no direct research again for its effects on increasing and improving immune function when it comes to sickness, there is a handful of research papers that demonstrate its ability to be an adjunct therapy for cancer patients, as well as demonstrating its ability to influence several different markers of immune function. I actually kind of put it on the list really close to astragalus. And though astragalus may have a slightly more significant effect on immune function, specifically when it comes to sickness, reishi mushroom also has a fairly high potency coupled with a much broader size of research. And so because of this, I did feel it was necessary to make a slight adjustment uh, to the list of lesser known immune stimulants. And now I want to spend the rest of this video very briefly talking about uh, four specific compounds that are super popular that I got a ton of questions on that I just kind of want to settle the dust on. And it's not that these are necessarily terrible compounds or not healthy compounds. It's just that there is no living model research either in rats or in humans. So some of these compounds have some like Petri dish evidence on their ability to be antiviral or antibacterial. However, that doesn't always carry over into living models. And so unless you have exhausted every single resource that I have already mentioned, including garlic, echinacea, vitamin C, zinc, vitamin D, as well as the five herbs that I just mentioned, these are super, super, super low on the list. And they include olive leaf, colloidal silver, all the medicinal mushrooms, and oil of oregano. And now again, there is some very, very preliminary evidence on all of these in a few different models. However, because they have zero, and I mean absolutely 
no clinical research whatsoever into their effects on the human immune system. I put these extremely low on my list of compounds that I personally recommend as well as use in order to improve immune function. But other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope this uh, kind of cleared up some of the air and some of your questions that you had from the previous video. Um, if it didn't, again, feel free to leave a comment down below and link to any research that you guys might be looking at personally as well and that you might have questions about. I love answering you guys' questions. It's one of the funner things about having a YouTube channel. So again, if you have a question, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, I will see you guys next time.